Hey guys, welcome to PCC Student Connect Takeover Thursday. I am here um, highlighting and spotlighting, highlighting, spotlighting, highlighting for hair. So let's say spotlighting. Um, Lindsay Johnson, she is gonna do an art tutorial for us today. Anybody that's interested or ever wanted to try like a painting by numbers kind of thing, this is even better. You don't even have to have numbers or these little grids. She totally shows and takes us through an experience of painting this beautiful sky and mountains and like a lake river thing. So cool. Um, sit down and watch it and then you can go back a second time and even try what she suggests and teaches us. Hey, I'm Lindsay. I'm gonna be teaching you how to paint a mountain scene. All right, so since I am already have white paint on my canvas, I'm gonna just need a little bit of blue. And then, um, this is my paintbrush from already being white. So I'm just gonna like dab it into the blue paint. And then you're gonna like try to blend it into your canvas. So what I'm doing here is I'm just dipping into my white paint and then I'm starting at the bottom and I'm working my way up to the blue to blend it in. So I painted the sky with a really big brush because I just wanted an even coating, but I'm going to use a smaller brush for the clouds. We don't want too small because clouds shouldn't be detailed. What you're going to want to do is dip your brush in some water and so it's damp but not dripping. And then you're going to go in with some white and then just, just dab it on. What I like to do is I like to have the top of the cloud very defined and then I blend out the bottom. Be careful not to make the same shape of cloud every single time because then it'll look just less realistic. So what I usually do is I'll keep making like these triangle shaped clouds, but I have to remember not to make that every single time. I have to make a different type of shaped cloud. When I'm just about done with the clouds, I'll go in with the dry brush and I'll just drag it along the bottom of the clouds to um, blend out the clouds to make it a bit more natural looking. So if your brown isn't turning out right, it might be because you're adding too much of one color. So if your brown is too green, then you'll want to add the opposite on the color wheel, which is red. So if you add red to your greeny brown, then it'll look more of a basic brown. If your brown is too orange, then you'll want to add blue. If it's too purple, then you'll want to add yellow. The way I like to paint is to start off with a medium color and then add in the highlights and the shadows later. When you look at a mountain nine times out of ten, the shadow side, like the dark side, will have like sort of a blue tint to it. So when you're doing your shadows, instead of just adding black to it, you'll want to add some blue and then just a little bit so it's not too crazy. Okay. Acrylics dry really fast, so you'll want to use water to kind of um, help you blend in when it starts to dry too fast. Because um, like for me, the most annoying part about acrylics is that they just, it just dries way too fast before I can blend it together. And so then I'm left with like this, these really harsh lines that aren't blendable. So just like the sky, you'll want to line the bottom of your canvas with white. And then it's easier to blend in that water. For the color of the lake, I'm going to do three parts blue and one part green. We're going to dip our brush in a little bit of water so it's slightly wet but not like soaking. And then dab into the blue and a little bit into the green, and then mix that, and just drag along your canvas. Now you don't want to go all the way to the middle because you want this part to be white. And then get your paintbrush a little bit wet, and just smooth out the edges a little bit more. I found the side of the lake, I'm going to add a bit of green and then a tiny bit of red to make the green a little less vibrant. To add in the shadow where like the grass meets the water, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to mix together the green and the red equally um, to make a brown. 
and I'm going to take a very small brush and I'm just going to dab it along the edge of the water. Now with a fan brush, I'm just going to um, blend out this shadow. It's very lightly you want to drag it along the shadow. Now we're going to paint in our trees. I'm going to take some yellow, squirt it onto my palette, and then I'm just going to go in with a fan brush, grab a little bit of yellow and a little bit of this um, brown green mixture. I'm just going to draw a line coming up. The more layers you add to this tree, the more depth it'll have, because like the first time through it looks very flat, and then once you just add more like darks and highlights to it, it'll start to come to life. And we're just going to fill this whole river with a bunch of pine trees. Don't be afraid to let your pine trees overlap each other, because if you get them too far apart, then they'll start to look like fence posts, and you really don't want that. And just like the trees, I'm going to paint this little island over here with a dark green, and then I'm going to highlight it with a lighter green. So I'm taking a very small brush and I'm dipping it into some water. And then I'm gonna use white and start off with my base. So for my flowers, I'm thinking I'm gonna do a lavender design. So basically I'm gonna imagine like a line and then just like dab on like the leaves like this. but this is gonna be a lot smaller along the bank. was so much fun. I um, hope you enjoyed uh, Lindsay's talent and skills that she shared with us and we'd love to spotlight you. If anyone's out there that has a talent and skill they want to share, please contact me or Haley. Um, otherwise, have a great day and see you guys tomorrow for Fabulous Friday Worship Breakdown with Steven.